Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another edition of Vantage Point on ITV. I'm your host, Mohammed Chunara. Thank you for joining us this evening. Today marks five years since an eventful day in Marikana in the northwest of South Africa. 34 miners were killed and many others were injured. And also so many policemen and security guards were also killed on that fateful day in Marikana. But many people say justice has not been served. Although we had the Falem Commission of Inquiry, nothing much has come out of it besides Ria Piecha losing her job in the interim period. The next clip we're going to show you details some of the issues that took place on that fateful day in Marikana. Stay tuned. <laughs> I still remember vividly the face of those workers. I still remember my words I said. When Kolanem Gambi of ETV asked me, what now? I said, all this is in God's hands. I'm a mortal man, those are my words. I'm a mortal man. Good. Immediately following Joseph Mutunjua's passionate plea, over a thousand miners decided to leave the mountain and make their way home. negotiations with this gathering for quite a few days and part of that was that it can reach an amicable solution for them to uh, drop their weapons and disperse. Unfortunately it doesn't seem as if negotiations have proven successful and the South African police service is going to have to go over to a tactical phase to ensure that we take weapons away from, um, from those gathered here. For that I need uh, all the media behind our vehicles. 
Yasugi hippie bipa, the coach raised why, Ukuka, Kaisiga Paya Pella, Yapella straight, the hippie bipa is being, Yasiga and Alea generally, that is why, Yetana, we are pan, stay my papans, Tatabia Pangas by Sat no, Sia Valle, Comrade, Masiambe, Umdo, I titty the Lord, Umambo, Umambo, Shuato, Wati Bassabins, Umono Siam, the Glenda. We're going to take a short break now, stay tuned. Welcome back to Vantage Point. 
South Africa has one of the highest rates of HIV AIDS infections in the world. Many kids are unfortunately affected due to their parents having the virus. But one woman, a good Samaritan, has taken it upon herself to help these AIDS orphans in South Africa. The next clip shows the journey this woman has gone through to make the lives of AIDS orphans a bit easier to bear. When I'm back at home, it brings back the memories of how I grew up. Let me see. There she is. <laughs> oh, my mother. <laughs> Sis, go hmm? on. <laughs> to see my mother still up and running makes me whole. It brings back the good times. It's like I see Lawrence, it's like I see Cyril, it's like I see Thelma, I see Tom. It's, it's like they're here and that's what makes me happy. HIV AIDS was like an attack on, on my family. So when my first brother came to my house asking for help, for me, he was sick. He, he was coughing. We visited the doctor. He called me aside and wanted to know if I knew about HIV AIDS. And I said to the doctor, no, I don't know. So I, I, I came back from Johannesburg and Lawrence was here. And at that stage, he was in this house and he was lying down there. I remember that day when I came, I knew that Lawrence was dying. Then the next one was Tobile. Just never wanted to be tested. She died. And then it was Cyril. I have lost five siblings, and all of them had children already. In this household, we had 18 orphans because of HIV AIDS. The generation that I grew up with, half of us when we finished school, we went up to Johannesburg trying to find work. And this HIV AIDS thing started hitting that group of generation that went up to Johannesburg. Because I remember very well that they were the first group that we started bringing home when they were sick or when they had died. And each and every time we were coming down for the funeral, it would ring in my mind that how long are we going to be doing these trips? How long are we going to be bringing these dead people to our parents? The first thing I said was, I want to go back home. I want to go back to my community and do something about the, the, the offense. I need to go back home and call a meeting. People came for, for, for the meeting. The chief was there. All the traditional leaders were there. I had teachers, I had grandmothers with babies in their bags, young people, people who wanted to know what is happening. What are we going to do? These grandmothers were not asking for big things. All they were asking was help them feed these children and give them clothes and help them go to school. Friends of mine got together and gave us donations. And I'm happy to say that not a single grandmother would come and ask me about something that I was not going to be able to do. It was basic things that they were asking for. 
since the start of Imizamo that happened 10 years ago, each and every time I come here, I always make a point that I bring something, not only for my family, but also for my family in the community. To some of the grannies that are still alive, it is still a sign that I am still with them. I haven't left them. Full color pants? She wants to sit flat on the floor. That's what she no. Yeah, okay. Grandmother had gone out to do whatever grandmothers do during the day and there was no one at home with them. I could see at that stage that those kids needed, needed care and I, I, I couldn't say to myself I'll come back tomorrow, no. I decided I was going to run home pick up a few things, soap, cream, and I went back and, and, and I, I, I made fire and I warmed some water and I started bathing them. And that's 10 years ago. Mpela ngbona kunzi mangoba ngkola lo mara khulume nupela. Kungono nga angsai toche. Auma jaksa toche. And ten years ago when when I promised that I was gonna try and do something and help my community. I needed to carry that promise. But when I saw Mpume yesterday, it felt like I didn't keep up to my promise. My Gishala no coco, Uma Mansenai, Uba Mansenai, Kumelengim Chelwood, Noba Ushala no coco, Okoka Fana no Zaluako. Some of them are still dependent on grandmothers. So if we lose these grandmothers, that, that's a risk. From the age of 15, 16, 17, and up, those are the ones that are getting HIV AIDS at this moment. They're looking for, for comfort, they're looking for and income in wrong places. La Baba Sugabezo test. We are born to wear figure moon to Tojo is Faza and Gakurgas, Abanto Abava, and Sogzo wins a blood test, a two moon to Isogalami, the Tanda Bantu Bes Faza. Umbos, the Mambos, the Gutsu, and Utabango, who was tolling and Jan, at the veiling is tolling, Kumun to one. If no one comes to 
to the rescue of, of these orphans. The risk of them going out and trying to find life for themselves is high. But if we can still not give up and stand up and do something, I am sure we will win some, some of our young people back into life again. My mother, she's very old now. She, she doesn't have time to, to read them stories. She's complaining of her eyesight. She's complaining of almost everything. When I put my arms around these kids, I know that that's what they need. So when I come here and I do the things that I do with these kids, I'm trying to, to give them just this little comfort that they need because I know they need it. We've come to the end of today's show. Thank you for joining us this evening. We hope you enjoyed it. Remember, you can interact with us on Twitter at ITV underscore SA or send us an email at vantagepoint at ITVnetworks.tv. From all of us in the team, have a wonderful week. Fiamanila. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.